Welcome to video number three. Uh, in this example, I'm going to introduce a method that you can use to model absorbing films. Uh, it can be used really to model almost anything. However, it does have some limitations and, uh, and some potential difficulties when extended to certain applications. All right. So here I have a, uh, a data file that's been loaded, and this is a titanium nitride grown on silicon. Now, uh, the first thing I'll say is that this was actually an attempt at growing titanium nitride, so I don't really know uh, whether or not it's exactly stoichiometric or if it's very smooth or if it's defective. All I know is that it is a material that I attempted to make uh, which should be titanium nitride. So I'll show you a little bit uh, how we can start to analyze a film like this and maybe even use ellipsometry to try and tell us, have I made titanium nitride? Does it agree with, uh, you know, a standard accepted values for index of refraction and absorption coefficient that you would expect from this material? So first thing I'll just, I'll do real quick is I'll just illustrate that if we try to model this using the techniques we've already looked at, so uh, we'll go to semiconductor, select our substrate, silicon substrate, and then add layer on top. If I just try to use a Cauchy equation, now my target thickness for this was about 100 nanometers. So I'll just put in 100 nanometers, and what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and just fit, fit, and fit thickness and let's see what I get. Well, terrible. Nothing good. Now, let's say I just wrote, you know, textbook wise, the index of refraction for this material according to uh, film metrics is about uh, 1.35 should be the index coefficient here. And let's say I bring this down to something like a typical range, something like, you know, 0.05 is probably pretty reasonable. And then I step this up to about 100. What does it look like? Well, it doesn't look anything like this film. I know just from a bit of experience that when I look at this data, I can immediately see that this is not uh, a transparent material. It's quite absorbing. So this Cauchy, Cauchy equation is always going to fail. So I'm just going to go ahead and change this over to, it's in the basic section, a... Um, B actually, you know what? Before before that, before we go to B spline, let's let's see how some other things aren't going to work for us. So I'll go to metal, and titanium is metallic. So uh, I'll see if I have it, and we do have some examples. You'll notice that a number of these have this uh, Lawrence in in parentheses. That means they use a Lawrence oscillator. I'm going to stay away from those right now because one of those may work pretty well. I want to show you an example of how. If we just use our tabulated data files we might have for Thai nitride, that they're just, they're not going to work for us. So I have Thai nitride, I'll try to fit the thickness, and let's just fit. Well, that fails. I'll try the other, the next Thai nitride, set this back to 100, and try to fit it. Also fails. Let's try the third one. Set it back to 100. Try to fit. Also, it fails. So yeah, so none of, none of these are going to work. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use this basic equation or this basic uh, type of fitting called B-spline. Now, B-spline is not exactly an equation. It's basically kind of just like a math technique. Um, it looks at a data point, you know, at some point in your, you know, some wavelength value. It looks at a data point, and then what it does is it sets a upper bound and a lower bound for it, and then it moves over to the next point, sets an upper bound and a lower bound, and it tries to adjust these points so that it can create a function which wiggles through your actual data with its as close approximation as possible. So if I use this B spline, I can set the resolution, which is the distance in electron volts, uh, which is related to wavelength, um, where these different nodes uh, or splines are going to be located. So if I just try to fit this uh, thickness and see what I get, 
well, I get something that looks crazy and totally fails. And part of the reason why this fails is because it needs to be based off of some set of uh, optical properties. And we don't have anything to start with. So it's just kind of just taking wild guesses. So what I'll, what I'll do is one way to uh, attempt to approach this is first I'll set this back to 100 because I'm pretty sure it should be close to 100. And I'll, what I'll actually do is increase the resolution. Or not yet. We don't, we don't need, to do, need to do that yet. So we'll leave it at 0.3. And I'm just going to select this region out here, which is a lot flatter. This region has way less curves to it, and therefore it'll be it'll be a lot easier to get the B spline to, you know, figure out all the fudge factors necessary to fit this really well. And so if I just go ahead and hit fit, now it it matches pretty well. Um, now if I maybe increase my resolution to 0.2. And what this is doing is it's taking the distance between the points where it goes, what's my value? Try to fit it. What's my value? Try to fit it. What's my value? Try to fit it. And it brings them closer together. This will help you capture like a lot of twists and turns, uh, peaks, sharper peaks that otherwise may lie between two nodes and therefore won't be able to get captured in the fit. And if I try to fit, it gets a little bit better. Now it fits really well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as the jump off point to try and fit the rest of the data. So to do that, we're going to go to other options and we're going to do this wavelength expansion fit. And what this is going to do is it's going to, if I look at my full range, it's going to step out and fit and then step out and fit and step out and fit. So it has a starting point, which is all this information back here to start jumping off of. So therefore it knows, well, the next point probably isn't going to be totally there or totally up really high. It should be something relative to the previous values. So I'll use this expansion fit and I'm going to expand through the entire wavelength that I scan in and it iterates through and now I've got a pretty good fit pretty good fit. It tells me my thickness is about 98.4 nanometers, which is close to what I would have uh, expected. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll just take a look at the optical properties that are calculated uh, from fitting to this uh, size shift. So I'll go to my model, optical constants, B-spline, and here's what I get. So the first thing I want to try to pay attention to is is what I'm seeing possible. Uh, a great way to take a look at that is if we look at the absorption, which is this green curve, am I getting any negative values? If absorption goes negative, you know this has got to be wrong. You can't have a negative absorption. A negative absorption would mean that your material just spontaneously emits light. Uh, no, no, is always emitting light rather than absorbing it. Um, so unless this is just, you know, always lazing, then that's this is not possible that it could have a negative K value. Now, I also, you know, I look at a kind of a standard reference for what nitride might have. And if I look at, you know, some reference value, some reference wavelength, these numbers, they, they're not close to nitride. So I'd say based off of this, I'm, I'm not able to say that this is titanium nitride. But this probably is decently accurate uh, for this specific material, especially because we're able to fit this data so well. So that is one approach that we can use. Um, so one thing I'll do real quick is we're going to make a little comparison. I'm just going to take this, I'm just going to right click, and I'm going to see this here. It says, uh, copy data to graph scratch pad. And when I do that, and I'll right click, and then again, view graph scratch pad. And now I've got that was the first, the first fit I did. This is the absorption coefficient and the index of refraction. I'm going to make a comparison. So I'm just going to color these differently. I'm going to make index blue and absorption like purple. Uh, and then we're going to take a look at another approach and see how close the result is. So another way that I can go about doing this, uh, instead of doing a wavelength expansion fit, is I can start with a set of uh, 
optical data points that I can then use to fit to. So I'll just go ahead and delete this B-spline and I'll add another one. And I'm just going to go ahead, just a blank B-spline. I'll set my thickness to about 100. Okay, uh, I'm not going to fit the thickness yet. And I'll, I'll set my resolution down to 0.2. That worked pretty well last time. Now if I go to this nodes section, you'll see this thing right here. It says starting mat or starting material. It says none. I'm going to click it, and then I'll be able to go and try and uh, use an existing material file as the starting optical constants. So I'll just try this, you know, tabulated data file, tinitride one, and I'll use that. And here it shows me this. These are the, you know the different splines, and this is the, you know, this is the absorption and index that this tabulated data file has in it. Uh, so then we're going to use this as a starting point. So now if I just hit fit, now it alters these and tries to fit them to the actual data that I have. Now you notice there, there it's, it's quite a bit different. Um, so now that I fit that, it kind of shows me the quality of the fit. I'll go back to my psi, and now I'll try to fit the thickness. And what do I get? I get the same exact result, same quality of a fit, and this is another way that I could can approach this. So now let's look at the uh, what I actually get out of it. So this is the optical properties of my material. I will right click, uh, copy data to graph scratch pad, and then I can go and view the scratch pad. And my two functions, they they overlap each other exactly. So I can uncheck these, and you can see there the exact same function. So two different approaches that can be used to arrive at the same result. Uh, you may find, however, that if you're, if you're having trouble with one of these approaches, the other one might work a lot better. It's really going to depend on the system and you know what the, the absorption looks like. Are there any specific peaks anywhere? Uh, you can also utilize this concept to deal with a semi-absorbing film, which is something that I'll cover in a uh, video in the future. Okay, look forward to the next video.